Watching movies, yes, do it. Don't have to write down every word, but soak your brain in the language. Podcasts, videos, absolutely, but that's passive listening. And that is not going to make your listening better in a short period of time. So that's then active listening. So that's the other type. So for the other type, active listening, you are taking, for example, one episode of a TV show, one TED Talk, one YouTube video. It should be challenging so that you can understand maybe 50 or 60 percent. You then use this as your focused practice. You're going to sit down, you're going to listen, and you're going to try to write down all of the key words. So you know you need to improve your listening. How do you actually do that? Let's quickly talk about that because if you know how, if you know the steps to take to improve your listening, then it's really just a matter of doing it, right? But first, I want to talk about active versus passive listening. It's important to understand the difference between these two because once you do, you can identify which one you're spending your time on. I get this question a lot. Should I be listening to podcasts and watching videos and movies or should I be sitting down with one episode, going through it word by word, writing everything down? Well, I would say do both, but know that those two things are two different things. The first one of those is passive listening. Now, passive listening can be good. It's sort of like soaking your brain in the, in the language in a way. It's getting used to hearing the language it's starting to identify and pick up what are called phonemes, the basic sounds of the language. And gradually over time, you get more comfortable with those phonemes. You get better at identifying the sounds. You get better at comprehending, right? But it's a very slow sort of long ongoing process. So watching movies, yes, do it. Don't have to write down every word. You don't have to focus on specifically what is being said at every moment, but soak your brain in the language, podcasts, videos, whatever it is. Yes, absolutely. But that's passive listening. And that is not going to make your listening better in a short period of time. That's not hyper-focused. It's not going to improve your listening quickly, right? So that's then active listening. So that's the other type. So for the other type, active listening, you are taking, for example, one episode of a TV show, one TED Talk, one YouTube video that challenges you. It shouldn't be super easy. You understand absolutely everything. It should be challenging so that you can understand maybe 50 or 60 percent, but the other 40, 50 percent is just too hard for you to understand. You then use this as your focused practice where you sit down and say, I'm going to listen and not watch any subtitles. So for this one, you don't want to use subtitles. And we'll talk about subtitles more in a second. You're going to sit down, you're going to listen, and you're going to try to write down all of the key words. That means the important words you don't know. And if you don't understand, you go back and you listen six times. And then I think I got it. Then, yeah, okay, I got it. Based on the context the grammar of the sentence, the sounds, I think I understand what they're saying there, right? Then as a last resort, you can use the subtitles to verify what you think you heard. But there you might be spending, I don't know, a week just going through one episode. So that's good to do too. But then you might say, okay, well, yeah, that's very tiring. So then it, it's so tiring, I don't want to do it that often. So then I'm not actually watching many movies. I'm not watching a lot of TV shows. Yes. That's why you do both. That's why you do some active practice, maybe 20 minutes a day, right? 30 minutes a day. And then you do passive practice, passive listening, where you, you soak your brain in the language. And both of those together are powerful, okay? So you don't have to choose. And in fact, you shouldn't choose. Now, what about subtitles? So you're watching a movie, you're watching a TED Talk, you're watching a video. What about subtitles? The issue with subtitles is that it can be seductive and you you naturally because you're you're 
reading is better than your listening, your eyeballs will be looking at the words, even if it's in English, right? And saying, pay attention to that, not this. Pay attention to what your eyes are taking in, not your ears. And you'll do that because we have selective attention. So you'll be reading and comprehending. And that part of your brain, which is having to get the meaning from the words to make it make sense in your head is coming through your eyeballs now, even though it's even though your ears have access to it, <laughs> it's not really coming through your ears. So if you really want to improve, you have to force yourself to comprehend, to understand through your ears. So you're watching a TED talk, you're watching a video, you're watching a movie, TV show. You have to turn off the subtitles. You have to try to understand. Even if we're talking about passive listening here, I would say, even then, challenge yourself a little bit to try to understand what's going on. What that's doing is putting pressure on, let's call it your ears, even though it's, of course, it's not just your ears, but it's putting pressure on your listening, on your ears to be able to understand because you don't have anything else to use. You can't read anything because there's nothing there to read. So then do subtitles have any role when it comes to improving listening? I would say, as I said, to check to make sure you understood it. So you listen to a part and you just, for curiosity, go back, turn the subtitles on to make sure, okay, yes, I did hear that correctly. So it's a good way to verify that, right? So we have passive and active. We have how we use subtitles. Now, let's drill down into that active for a second and talk about specific practice. The most focused practice you can do is to take something that's really short and really difficult. Let's say 40 seconds, 40 seconds, 30 seconds. A clip of audio, specifically audio, no video is even better, that is really difficult to understand. And you give yourself the task of having to write down every single word. You have to write down every word, okay? When you do that, when you're writing down every word and you force yourself to have to write down every word, you are essentially solving problems. It's like solving a riddle, right, in a way, cracking a code. I hear this set of words together. It sounds like six words. I can't find which they're blending together so much. But I promise you, if you listen to that 20 times, <laughs> you're going to start to be able to pull apart some of these things. It's not necessarily what you know or don't know, right? It's about being able to tease the sounds apart. And once you start to do that, then you'll be able to start to identify, okay, that's is there. Okay, that's a, that's a grammar word. Oh, that's, uh, that's hamburger, <laughs> whatever word. That, that is there, right? You'll start to be able to pull these apart. This, because you're doing it over and over and over for this 40 seconds, that's why it's very important that it be short. You're playing it over and over and over. This is really honing your listening skills. It's the fastest way that I'm aware of to improve listening. So this kind of practice maybe is not for everybody, but if you are in need of rapid progress for your listening, then spending 45 minutes on this every day, uh, forcing yourself to go over a very difficult clip of audio again and again until you can write down every single word is going to do wonders for your listening skills. That is going to hone your listening and it's going to take your listening up to or beyond the level of your reading. Okay. Now, what about interacting with others, right? Should you interact with others and how should you do that? Well, of course, of course you should. What about when people say things you don't understand? Somebody says something very quickly or they say something that's kind of mushed together. What should you do? This is a great chance for interaction. This is a great chance to connect with someone. So if you say, sorry, could you say that again? Could you repeat that? And then ask for an explanation. Oh, okay, I'm, I'm not familiar with that cold turkey. I, I'm not familiar with that. What does that mean? Oh, and then they'll explain. This is, number one, a great opportunity to connect with someone, to get help, right? 
and maybe make a new friend, perhaps, if you're not familiar with them, or make a, have a better relationship with someone you already know, but also a great way to learn. If you don't know something, ask. It's that Confucius quote, the man who asks a question is a fool for a minute, and the man who never asked is a fool for a lifetime. So ask the question, and that asking the question is going to be a great feedback mechanism for you. Finally, what about what about translation, right? Should you translate language in your head when you're listening? And the simple answer is no. If you don't develop your English brain, if you don't develop your ability to think in English as you're listening and as you're speaking, as a matter of fact, then it's going to be exhausting every time. So you have to be able to, you have to develop an English brain for listening so that when you hear things, you're not converting those words, meanings into your language. Instead, you just understand it right away. And it's a conscious effort to not translate, to not allow yourself to translate. Just try to imagine your part of you as a little baby growing up in an all English speaking world and as a little baby, you need to learn the language just like a little baby does. And you don't have any other language to use, to reference. So you just have to learn the language in the language. And that definitely includes listening. So don't try to translate in your head when you're listening. Okay. So if you want to improve your listening, do both active and passive listening. Don't use subtitles to put pressure on your listening skills. Do focused practice if you really want to improve quickly, where you use short clips to force yourself to write down every word and hear every single sound. Ask people if you don't understand something. Ask for repetition. Ask for explanation. And don't try to translate in your head, okay? If you have any questions about this, let me know. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe and also check out my full courses in the links in the description. Mm -hmm.